hypotheses in it, then there's a quantum algorithm which finds um, a solution to the CSP in time roughly square root of t times by some poly n term. And this speeds up the DPLL algorithm, which is the basis of uh, most of the uh, fastest SAT solvers which people use in practice. OK, so some open problems. So what about if the classical algorithm just finds a solution early on in the tree? For example, it could go down to the left-hand edge of the tree first, and maybe that's where the solution is. So in this case, the quantum algorithm might not uh, achieve uh, a speed up over the classical algorithm. Um, so it'd be nice to see if we can still speed up uh, the classical algorithm in this kind of sense. Um, can we improve the, the runtime for finding a, a solution of the quantum algorithm to the best possible runtime, which would be square root of t times square root of n? Um, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Like, uh, so at the moment, it's n to the 3 upon 2 and then some polylogs. Um, and also, if we have k solutions uh, to the CSP, can we find all of them in time square root of t times square root of n times square root of k? Because uh, at the moment, we have square root of t times n to the 3 upon 2 times k, which is, is not always better than the classical algorithm if there are many, many solutions. Finally, what else can we do using this uh, framework about uh, resistance and quantum walks uh, due to Alexander Bellows in, in 2013? I feel like there's probably more algorithmic applications out there other than the ones already known. And I think this is a kind of interesting uh, future direction. Okay, so this is everything I wanted to say. So thanks all very much. About the the, uh, the first question about the lucky classical algorithm, mm -hmm. could you uh, is there a way to to chop up the tree and say, you know, first we'll search only a tree with two and then four and then eight and then sixteen and and thirty two et cetera vertices? Right. Well, in fact, that, that's the interesting thing because it's not obvious how to do this because oh, because you don't know the size. Yeah, your... because you because yeah, the the tree you know, is only kind of defined as the classical algorithm explores it. So, for example, it could be very unbalanced, and then you, you don't know sort of, yeah, how to so That's up. what stops you from... from that's what's, yeah. Right, the, thanks. Yeah, if, if I may suggest... Sorry, from here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's right. If I may suggest another open problem would be mm -hmm. to count a number of solutions. Right, so... Th right, this is a, an interesting question, and, um, yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't know how to do it. I mean, I would imagine that it's... Uh, potentially related to that, finding all of the solutions. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was wondering if this can be viewed as uh, segedic quantization of some kind of classical Markov chain, or is that not? Um, right, so, so it can do in a way. Like the, the classical algorithm corresponding to this is a very simple one. It's just walk around randomly in the tree until you find you know, a solution. Um, and Right, so it, this does fit into the, that framework. The, on, the only issue is that um, the results of, of Segedi about search by quantum walk, they don't apply to the setting here because we firstly are starting out in, in the root. We don't start out in the stationary distribution. And also, you know, the thing is, isn't defined kind of in, in advance. So, um, so, so, right, so, so you're completely right. There is, there is some kind of analog, but um, it's not totally clear to me whether you can use the results of Segedi directly. Thanks. In the interest of keeping on schedule, I think we should take the remaining uh, questions offline and move to the next speaker. Our speaker again. <laughs>